Welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, where we are in the upper city of Alushinera, and we are heading into this abandoned mansion, which is part of Bulgif's um, companion quest. Okay, this place looks... That is a statue of Baphomet. Why is there a statue of Baphomet in... in... Uh, Alushanira? I want to take my party away from that statue. Potentially not go into the traps. Something wrong. No, I just like you to be able to can I even get around that thing oh it is there this is my kind of work always Plan. be ready for the Go worst ahead. can't hide from me okay put them everyone up there let me uh grab a thumbnail here And there was something we could loot here. Not that it was anything of much interest, but... What is this? Ooh. Are we in trouble I know what yet? to do. Hmm? I'll just grab it all and I can just sell the crap to the vendors. Lance, you, you go challenge. ahead. I'm curious. Your perception is at 36 now. I think you have the highest perception of the group. One stealth. Yeah, without a doubt. We will win this war. This looks pleasant. Votiel is waiting for you in the main hall of the mansion. The spikes on his powerful shoulders and back bulge out violently. I knew the spawn of Igathelus would come to gaze at his inheritance. Pathetic, stupid nobody. Do you think you'll be lucky a second time? Run, little tiefling. Run away and don't stop. Maybe you'll survive a little longer. But I'll still find you, no matter where you run. And I'll suck your eyes out of their socket -like, sockets like grapes from their skins. Think I was just lucky, you lizard? I had the chief with me then, and now I don't even need the chief to kick your ass. I came for my inheritance, for my power. And when I get it, we'll see who's laughing then. Uldrif looks back at you and whispers, I think I went a little bit too far there. You reckon they'll kill me quickly after that? The thing I just said about not needing you. I was just saying it, but I didn't mean it, so don't get any ideas. Why are you so eager to destroy Vol'jith? He hasn't done anything to you. He and Igathelus are all guilty before my mistress by virtue of their very birth. Lady Hepsamira, the strongest child of Baphomet, hunts down her unworthy brothers and sisters because she alone should stand before the throne of her father, the Lord of Labyrinth. Labyrinths. I will tell you how Aegithelus was killed, you pile of refuse and this refuse, and this story will be the last thing that you hear. No one can escape from Mistress, Mistress Hepsamira. Aegithelus tried. At first he settled down here in Alushanera. 
He thought that in the lands of Nocticula no one would get him. Ha! I found him. For my mistress. When he sensed me, he locked himself in his treasure room like a cowardly rat, not wanting to accept his inevitable death. I carved through his henchmen and reached his hiding place. The bones of those who did not have the time to flee crunched beneath my feet. I tore down the doors of the treasure room, pretending to myself that I was ripping apart the pathetic coward. But inside, I found only a corpse. Oh, my lady was so pleased. But... The demon's small eyes squint suspiciously. I knew something was wrong. The corpse lay in front of me, but I felt sure that Igathelus had escaped. I tortured his servants until they, re they revealed the secret of the Moon of the Abyss. I made them search every corner, but the moon was gone. How many years I searched for it. And then I found not only it, but this tiefling as well. Lady Hepsamira will reward me when I bring her the horned skull of a defective spawn that dishonors the blood of Baphomet. And she will reward me twice over when I reveal the escape of that scum, Igifelus. Is Waldrif a descendant of Baphomet himself? Yeah, so you're telling me I'm related to old Baphomet. How'd that happen? Lord Baphomet conceived many demons, many bastard children unworthy of their father. One of them was Igifelus, who made his way to Galarian. His blood, and hence the blood of Baphomet, flows in you, tiefling. Lady Hepsamira will destroy all who defile the purity of this blood. My, my. It turns out you are of noble blood. Darren sweeps into a low, mocking bow before Wolgif. I beg your pardon, my dear sir, but would you be so kind as to remind me how I should address a noble personage from the Abyss? Your unholiness? Or perhaps your deplorable disgrace? Hold on. So does this mean that when you were telling me all those tall tales about actually being a prince of a faraway land, you were actually telling the truth? Looks like it. Go figure. Wuljif shakes his head in disbelief. I mean, I, I thought I was lying, but turns out I tripped over the truth without even knowing it. You sure did, Sila grins. I seem to recall you wrangling ten coins out of me, promising to repay me with heaps of gold once you found your family and got your inheritance. Well, it's time to pay up. Thing is, my family's still alive and kicking, see? Why don't we revisit this topic once we're not under the threat of a slow and painful death? What is this moon of the abyss? Ask the tiefling if Igathelus left the moon for him. He should know the answer. Nobody explained nothing to me. I don't even know why it's so important. Why does nobody ever tell me anything? I don't even know who this Igifelis guy is. My grandpa? My great-grandpa? My uncle? Votiel howls with laughter. Stupid tiefling, you don't even know why you're going to die. The demon that caused you to be born will also be the cause of your death. How did you know that Wuljif was coming here? I was informed that the tiefling I was searching for had set foot in the streets of Alushinura. Where else would he go but to the mansion of his ancestor looking for treasure? A shadow brought me here. A shadow should have known you were here because it always protects me from you, but... Why didn't it warn me? Enough talk. Who are you? I am the one whose attention you have been seeking for so long. I am Nocticula, ruler of the Midnight Isles. <laughs> I take it I finally have your attention. Yes, your arrival in Alashanera was quite impressive. Rumors have reached me even here, behind my locked gates and my wall of valiant guards. Rumors of a remarkable Galarian taking my Alashanera by storm. So what do you need? I would like to meet you in person, my remarkable and daring Galarian guest. You have been granted a great honor. An audience with a lady in shadows. You have my permission to enter the palace. Go there and wait. I will arrive when the time is right. Until then, you will be taken care of by one of my servants. 
That was very random of her to suddenly pop up in the middle of combat starting. But okay. I guess we have become as famous as we can in Alishinera. I like this song too. Uh, no. I will see to your demise. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Seriously? Rog? Okay. Revenge on Hepsamira and her henchmen. A gigantic demonic shadow separates from Wolgif and menacingly hangs in the air. At times it seems to grow as if the atmosphere of the abyss is feeding it and giving it additional strength. Wolgif. The voice of the shadow is deep and low and it seems to penetrate the mind, enveloping and replacing any other thoughts. My air. Wolgif freezes as if under some spell. Grandpa, I mean, your honor, I mean. I don't know what to call you. I never had a grandpa like this before, and no, uh, and I always knew it was your shadow. You're my guardian demon, huh? Huh, ah, well, why not? Always knew I was special, a prince or something. And this, uh, this is the chief. We should get to know each other. Chief, this is my grandpa. Not even a demon, but the shadow of a demon. You're pathetic. Igifella's voice is a low growl. But I am alive. And I will outlive everyone who wanted my death. Now that my heir is here, we will take revenge on all those who have wronged us. Igifella's voice softens as he addresses Wolgif. Are there many such wrongdoers, Wolgif? Yes, I see. I know, and every wrong has been another step leading you to this moment. You have endured everything. You are worthy of great power, my grandson. Wolgif looks at you in confusion, and for some reason he does not look happy. I endured? What is that really it? I really did it? I mean, is this how it goes when you want something for a long, long time and then BAM, here it is? Nah, that doesn't happen. There's gotta be something, something you're not saying, Gramps. Look, I don't want to rub you the wrong way, you know, but something's not making sense here. Right, Chief? What do you want from Wolgif, Gifellus? I want my grandson to accept my power and become a continuation of me. Tell me, Wolgif, do you want to ascend to the top of the world and rule it? If we combine my powers with your resourcefulness, the Abyss will submit to us, and all those who have wronged us will be punished. Any such wrongdoers here? Again? I? I'm worthy? Yeah, but I didn't even do anything. Listen, Grandpa, I understand you've been holed up in that crystal for a long time, so you probably don't know me well. I just steal here and there, trade a little, and I've never done anything special, you know? Maybe I'm not worthy at all. Maybe just wrong? What if later you turn around and say, Why did I go and give you that power, you useless idiot? No, I am not mistaken. I foresaw your birth, and I foresaw that you would come here. You are exactly what I need, Wolgif, and no one can replace you. How did you survive? Thanks to Aradon. Igifellus gives a low chuckle that rumbles like distant thunder. I do not know if you remember the times when prophecies were not just heaps of useless words, but I do remember. You see, I am the son of Baphomet. I don't think I you need an explanation of who he is. Baphomet conceived many children, but my sister, Hebsamira, wanted to be the only one. She marked us for death and hunted us down quite successfully. I did not want to be among her victims. I hid in Alishinira, but I knew it wouldn't last long. In the end, I decided to learn my future. Forewarned is forearmed. I was able to acquire all the knowledge I needed about my future self after many rituals. I saw a vision of how I would put a crystal, like a dark moon, into a silver setting. 
I spent a long time trying to understand this vision, and finally, bit by bit, a prophecy came to me. I realized that I would have to die in order to live again, that the Dark Crystal must become my refuge and re the receptacle of my powers. I must hide my soul in the crystal and wait for my heir to come to the Abyss and free me. This crystal is the Moon of the Abyss, set within a silver mount. I sent it to Galarian for my grandson. Do you see, Wuldriff? I anticipated your birth like no one else. Why did Votiel dislike you so much? Votiel. He wants to carry favor with his mistress and nothing more, but you cannot deny his intelligence. Epsamira was appeased when she saw my head, but he discovered the truth about the Moon of the Abyss and almost killed Wuldriff. Epsamira, the stupid cow, just wants to destroy all her brothers and sisters indiscriminately. But Votiel, his mind was constantly seeking ways to please her, and this desire aided his efforts. Well, he died pursuing his dream of greatness. Demons don't give something for nothing. What do you want in return? I have only one condition, and it is a very small one. Votiel shrinks down to the same size as Wolgif. My spirit will enter your body, Wolgif. It will hide within you, just as it hid within the crystal, invisible to you and invisible to others. So, you sort of want to take over my body? Wolgif looks disappointed. Really, Grandpa? I thought better of you. I'm your grandson, you know. You shouldn't treat your grandkids that way. You take care of them, put up with their hijinks and stuff. Not make puppets out of them. Life has taught you to be too cautious, Waldriff. I do not want to take your body. I want to help you. Who were you before you found the moon of the abyss? A pathetic thief from a small town. A coward and a traitor. A boy who was hated by his own mother. Driven away from everywhere he went. And now look. Votiel is dead. Look at all the treasures that are rightfully yours. And this is just the beginning. You will become the Prince of the Abyss, my grandson. Bigifella's voice grows lower, more insinuating. As for my living within your body, your success will be my success. I will only give you advice, as I did in the World Wound, and you will be free to choose whether or not to listen. However, I see that words will not satisfy you. Let me show you what you will gain if you agree. You say I've been driven away from everywhere, but the chief hasn't chased me off yet. So, show him, too. Since we're... Since we got into this together, chief. Actually, it's fine. Forget about it. Do what you want. No, you can't accept his gifts. Don't even look at them. You're making a mistake. Igathelus shows no sign of impatience, but his darkness seems to become deeper, more compelling. What a loyal friend you have, Waldriff. But maybe the chief just wants to guide you every step of the way? Maybe he is just afraid that you will become too independent? Waldriff looks to you as if trying to find the answer, but then turns away. I don't know, Gramps. Maybe you're right, but even if the chief mouths off, even if he doesn't do what I like, he's still the best thing that ever happened to me. At least let him take a look. As you wish. Bigathelus begins to grow, his darkness pulsating as it surrounds you until you are completely enveloped and nothing else can be seen. There is only silence, only darkness, and a soothing voice. Close your eyes, I will show you what the world will be like when the dark moon of the abyss rises. As the darkness recedes, you realize that you are standing on a deserted street in Canabras. However, to call it standing is an exaggeration. You are a disembodied spirit, and through your transparent body, you can see the walls of neighboring houses. Next to you is a slovenly dressed old woman with a swollen face, her lips pursed unkindly. When she opens her mouth, you hear the velvet voice of Igathelus. Observe, Commander. Get back here, you little weasel. Trying to steal from us where you're a rat? Demon spore, I'll throw you into the world wound. A boy of about ten runs toward you, and as he gets closer, you recognize him as Waldrif. 
He looks scared and clutches a piece of bread to his chest. Gran! Grandma! Help me! You said I should take the bread from him. Hide me, Gran! The old woman does not budge. Look at you, Wolgif. Small, weak, useless, always blaming others, always holding them responsible for your failures. You're exactly the same as you always have been. A boy who is so afraid of the world that he hides behind someone else's back. First your grandmother, then the thieflings, and then the commander. The boy can't hold back his tears anymore. Gran, why don't you ever help me? What will I have? They eat me, so hide me, please. You will remain this way forever because you are too cowardly and too weak to cope on your own. Only I can free you from this fear. Accept me, accept my power, and destroy your enemies. Come on, do not hesitate. Igifelis turns to you. Watch, Commander. Once he gets a taste of his, this power, you will never be able to sway him again. Wolgif, you're not a lonely child anymore. You do not need the powers of a demon. You have powers of your own, and you have my help. Wolgif turns to you when he hears your voice, wiping away his tears and sniffling loudly. The illusion vanishes and he becomes an adult again. Chief, you're here. Let's wipe the floor with him. Me and you fought against demons. What can a bunch of bandits do? Our victory is certain. Not much. Although... For some reason, I seem to be encumbered. Let's try this way. Hmm. When the darkness dissipates, you find yourself in a familiar basement, the one belonging to the Thieflings. Carries May and the others stand across from you as menacingly as they did before, and next to Wolgif is... you. I thought better of him. And I trusted you. You will never change, Wolgif. I wasn't wrong about you after all, Wolgif. You are a traitor. I took you into the gang because I heard you were a master lockpick. I was warned that you were a traitor, but I didn't listen. I took you on, and for what? You only endangered, endangered the family. But I didn't betray you. I only took what belongs to me, right, Chief? It's your fault I've been treated badly. Maybe if you were nicer, I wouldn't have done it. Don't try any of your fast talk on them. It's useless. Deep down, you wanted your chief to appreciate you, and for the Thieflings to love you for who you are, so that they could really become your family, since your blood relatives never were. But look at yourself. A coward, a thief, a loudmouth, a street rat, and even a demon spawn? Who would even want to accept you? There's nothing in you worthy of any interest. Take my power, Wolgif, and enchant them. Don't praise your name endlessly. You'll bask in their adoration. You can't make them love you. Try to tell them how much the moon of the abyss means to you. If they don't understand, remember that I understand. Wolgif nods and takes a step towards Charisme. His tail twitches. If I could tell you I took the moon of the abyss and stay here with you, I would. But I know I can't. The laws of the family don't work that way. I'm... Sorry, it ended this way, sister. I had fun with you lot. Or best gang I've had. You were. It doesn't matter if you love me or not. We knew it. You've always been a nasty street rat and you always will be. <laughs> what kind of rubbish are you talking, Wolgif? Yes. The 
darkness dissipates again, like in the last illusion, but this time you see not one world in front of you, but two. But the second looks at Hepsamira, who is before him. He looks like an exact copy of himself, but something in, something in him has changed imperceptibly. His presence is cold, his greatness, like an aura of darkness that vibrates around him. Now look, Commander. No, don't kill me. Have mercy. See what my power bestows. Imprisoned in the crystal, I felt how he called to me, how my magic was changing. I can defeat Hepsamira and Baphomet himself. With my power, you can easily crush your enemies, and any crusade will seem like a leisurely stroll. Now come and guide my heir to the right path. Is this what I'll become if I accept your gift, Grandpa? I do look pretty good. His voice still sounds uncertain. Waldrip looks back and forth between you and his double. So we need to decide right now. There won't be another chance. Right, I... I have to ask the Chief one last time. What do you reckon, Chief? To win, I need you and all the loyal friends I fight alongside. Not deals with demons. Wolf smiles. What's that, Chief? You can't do without my high-quality goods from the best warehouses of the family, huh? You know, life's not bad with you, Chief, although I've already developed a tick in my tail after all the adventures we've been through. All in all, well, what's left to think about? Hey, Gramps, I've decided. Wolf tosses the Moon of the Abyss in his hand. This thing's beautiful and expensive, of course, and I'll miss it, but I don't need any suspicious crystals, you know? I'll get rich after this trip and buy myself some ordinary ones. An hint of subtle persuasion instantly disappears from Miguelfella's voice. Weak! Coward! You give up power and for what? For human sentimentality? For friendship? You, who never before believed in all those sweet words, have allowed them to poison your mind. Hey, no, Gramps. I've been watching the Chief for a long time. After all the stuff he's done and said, he's never once lied to me. Not ever. He was on my side when nobody else was, and you? You sat in a medallion and waited for your prophecy bit to be fulfilled so you could put on me... put me on and wear, wear me around like a little meat vest. I think on it good and hard, Grandpa. Of the two of you, who do you think I'd trust? Stupid rat. I thought better of you. Apparently your horns have finally grown through your brain. I have to beat all that nonsense out of you. You will only serve me. We will be victorious. I'm not surprised that we would have a battle, that is. Insanity. I'm glad you uh, saved on that one, uh, Mulgif. I don't suppose I still have haste? No. Into the fray. Did you get haste from that? Yes, you did. Darren and Lan, did you get haste? Yes. Oh, Wolf is acting on his own. He's actually not in a party anymore. Precision and grace. I'm sure a feast of blood works on you. Yes, it does. These uh, reach weapons. Fine. 
I thought I cast it on myself. Thankfully, I didn't. Would you just die already? Thank you. Ah, well, that's that, I guess. And I was just getting used to having a grandpa. He's not the type who will teach you how to fish and fill a pipe, you know, but he's all right. Probably even decent for a demon. Not surprising that Gran remembered him well. Hmm. But who gives a damn about Grandma? Chief, you, I, I mean, <laughs> thanks. I, I don't know why you've treated me so nothing, you know? Well, look at me and I and you. B but it turned out that we're, well, friends? Actually, friends. And you've been there for me. Why are you looking at me? I I'm not crying. <laughs> My, my voice is like this because my throat's dry. <coughs> it's dusty in here. That's why my throat's itchy and, and my eyes are watering and my nose is running. What are you going to do now? Now? Are you the chief or what? You tell me. You know, I've got a good feeling about our campaign. So far, we've dealt with everything that's been thrown at us together. I'm starting to think the wrong gang was called the family, you know? I'm with you to the end, Chief. And after the campaign, well, you'll have to live long enough to find out. Let's defeat all the demons and then we'll see. What'll happen to the moon of the abyss? Huh? That's that. I'll keep the setting. It's nice work. Delicate, and another stone will look better in it. I'll keep it so I don't forget the choice I made and why. I'll just get it out, look at it, and remember. Ooh, and then if I live long enough to open my own shop, just a thought, you know, I'll put it in a glass case where everyone can see it and drive themselves sick with jealousy. <laughs> I like Wolf. Better get out of here for now. Well, go along to the old family nest. It's a pity I can't bring this back to Galeria. Well, not all of it, but there is something we can do. Hey, Chief, let's clean this place out from top to bottom so not even a speck of gold is left behind. I agree wholeheartedly with that one. My tail is twitching. Must be a sign. Did that do anything to his alignment? No, it's still chaotic. Either. I know there are certain actions you can do that'll make your party members uh, change mistakes. alignment. Might make you feel better. A bright future I'm awaits all ears. us. What's over there? No traps in here, at least. The stone slab is inscribed with small Sarkorian runes. The plaque reads, Cursed be the demons that destroyed eyes. Cursed be Ari Luvolesh who opened the way for them. And a curse upon you, the demon reading my last words. A statue of a mummified Marilith is embellished with intricate details. She almost looks like she's about to move. A fine statue of exquisite workmanship, worthy of decorating the courtyard of her king's castle. sinister skull carefully polished and displayed like a work of art the plaque reads he did not escape the ineluctable prison but his skull did the plaque reads i am the memorial of the reapers touch me to read my tale the writing on the plaque changes i am the last king of the reapers we were the offspring of the gods we were granted power over life and death we maintained balance in the universe at the zenith of our power, we rose higher than all others. We gazed upon, we gazed down upon creation, and we were untouchable. But the other races united in opposition to our purpose. They attacked from all sides and slaughtered us until none was left. As the day rises and the night falls, we all will move forward to meet our end. I, the memory of the last Reaper King, chained inside this memorial, bear witness to this truth. Huh. 
Are we in trouble yet? Find it, just have a look around this room. Can't hide from me. There's another room in there. Ah. Tread lightly. Uh huh. Okay, we'll do it. Don't mind me. No, no. But you need to disarm these traps. This is my kind of work. Scroll here. Slay living. Fine. How? Pretty good, aren't I? Lan, is there a trap on this thing? I'm here. Apparently not. Where else would I be? This is my kind of work. Wandering con man. Ten competence bonus to trickery and athletics, and plus two attack rolls for a taxable opportunity. I I think we found you a new uh, shirt, Wolgip. I mean, this one is decent, but uh, this one is definitely better. Do you have anything that gives bonuses to trickery except for that one? Stealth. Here, have this one on. That should put you at 51 trickery, so you can unequip this one because you don't need it anymore. Athletics. What's giving you athletics? This one is giving trickery, but the uh, sneak attack actually doesn't. No. No, it would have to be a uh, vivisectionist. Anyone else is a vivisectionist? No, what is the only one with sneak attacks? What's that noise? I don't think there's any noise here. Scrolls. This is my kind of work. Thank you. I think that's it on this side. Doubt is the, the heart's greatest, greatest challenge. Ah, the hitbox of those large people. I'll see to your request. I'm pretty sure we can uh, dimension door over there. Always be ready for the worst. No mistakes. I am prepared. This spell doesn't work like that. No, we actually can't. I did not expect that. Is there a room there if I can't dimension door over there? Do I have to do it from this side? Game says there is loot on the floor here, but I can't see anything. Oh well. Something... there was a chest there that I forgot. Oh, 
we go. Let's go down here and see if it's possible to have engine door up. I don't think so, though. Focus on the goal. This spell doesn't work like that. This is invalid target, like so. That. Yep. Well, with that out of the way, I think we'll wrap up this episode and uh, dedicate this to uh, Waldrip's uh, little uh, adventures as a. Uh, well. What's the, the, the term? I can't remember the word. Uh, descendant, that was the word I was looking for. Direct descendant of Baphomet. Not bad, not bad. That is not far. Probably not desirable, but still not bad. But if you have any questions and or comments, then please do feel free to leave those in the comment section, of course. And for now, thank you all so very much for joining me, and I hope to see you all in the next episode.